Hello, oh, welcome to the Galaxy Man Show. I'm here with this incredible artist known by the name of Sally Jane. So I'm proud to announce Sally Jane as the next guest on the show for this week. So here is Sally Jane, and yeah, please welcome Sally Jane on the show. Hello. Hello. How's it going, Sally? Good yourself. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thanks. I just want to say first up, thank you so much for taking the time to join my show. It is such an incredible pleasure having you on. Uh, to people that don't know who you are, Sally, if you can give like a bit of backstory about yourself and then we'll dive right into the question. Yeah, for sure. So, hey everyone, my name is Sally Jane. I'm 21 years old and I'm based in a small town called Serpentine, an hour south of Perth in Western Australia. We'll dive right into the questions now, Sally. So, for my very first question, so you've created incredible original songs and for the first original song i'm going to mention is called you and i like what was it like coming up with the idea coming up with the title of this song and just like what's the meaning behind you and i i think all of my best songs all of my strongest quality songs have been written in pretty much an hour which is uh pretty cool but you and i it's kind of about that feeling that you're with that one person that you love and really care about and you're in the car driving and it's pretty much you and I, all that matters. So we'll dive right into the next question. So there's a, a song that you also created called uh, Kiss You uh, When The Rain Comes. Incredible title. What was it Thank like? You. No, you're very welcome. What was it like coming <laughs> up with the idea of creating this song and what's the meaning behind the title? So, Kiss You When The Rain Comes, it came to life, I guess, uh, when we were driving through New South Wales on our way to Tamworth for the Country Music Festival, but we detoured a little bit and went to Emmerville, which is where my dad's friend has a farm there. And just seeing the devastation of the drought, um, it really affected me personally. It was really hard to comprehend. I'd never seen his paddock so dry and barren and his stock, I mean, he lost 80% of his sheep. Whereas last year I, or the year before I saw it and it was green, everything was fresh and I guess brand new. So seeing that it was, yeah, pretty shocking. But I guess the idea of the chorus is all about when it rains, when it rains and comes again, we'll dance and sing and it'll just be such a joyous occasion. So on to my very next question. So you have also created an original song called Too Young. What was it like creating this one? And what's the meaning behind Too Young? Yeah, I think Too Young was probably the hardest to record and the hardest song to write as well. While I was still in school, I had a, a peer, a someone in my class suddenly pass away. And even though we weren't close compared to other students in my class, it was still pretty hard for me to deal with only seeing him a few days beforehand and then suddenly he's not there. So Too Young is not a not only about him passing away too soon, but also for myself and my other peers to deal with losing someone at such a young age. So on to my very next question. So you have also created an original song called No Time. What was it like creating this one and what's the meaning behind No Time? Um, I think for a very long time I surrounded myself with negativity. I was trying to finish school, I was trying to do music, horses, netball, all of these sorts of things and I just really was quite down all the time and I had to try and break out of that. So. It was 2020 while we were on the Nullarbor, Dad and I, we were heading to Tamworth and we just pulled up for the night and we were just talking about how we don't have time for negative things in life, like this is going to be our year before our COVID hit, but so no time kind of came from that and I just put into the verses what I was experiencing and what I was dealing with at the time and then the chorus just being about you don't have time to think about negative things and it's life's too short to deal with that. So on to my very next question. So what made you decide as a person and like especially as an artist get into singing in the first place? Oh, honestly, I never thought I would do music as a career. I mean, I always wanted to go to uni and be a physiotherapist or something like that. But when I was 12, my dad, well, when mum and I bought my dad a guitar for Christmas and he never picked it up. I guess adult work life got in the way um, and I actually got sent to the back of the paddock. I was uh, a pretty woeful singer at the time. But when I was 15, 
I started sounding half decent and I'd learn a few chords off YouTube. So I went to the local pub in Serpentine before it was closed and got my first gig. They paid me and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. I'll come back next week and do the same thing. And then my dad found the Country Music Association of Australia Academy, Junior, Acad oh, Junior Academy. And we went the very next week and I've just been doing music ever since. And I think this year it's going to be the first time that I can fully make it a full-time career. So on to my very next question. So what does performing music like mean to you, like especially as an artist? I love being on stage. I honestly, I feel like it is now my happy place. I feel like I know where I belong. I know what I want to do for the rest of my life. I love the recording process as well, but definitely being on stage is something that I want to do. I love how I can connect to the audience with my songs or the, I'm making them laugh, making them cry, just making them feel something. And through my music, I'm helping people through their struggles as well, which is something that I love doing. I love to help people. And I, if I can do it with something I love, then it's a pretty cool career to have. So on to my very next question. So what has been your all-time favourite cover song to perform and why? I mean, I love any Casey Chambers song. I'm a huge fan of her songwriting. So out of the two top two songs that I have of hers would be Last Hard Bible because it is so upbeat, so much fun, but they're not pretty enough because I think it is a very mainstream song. A lot of people will know her song and also understand the lyrics to some degree and can relate to it and people can sing along to it as well. So on to my very next question. So if you could work with any top three music artists in the music industry, who would they be and why? Well, that's a really hard one because I have, I have a lot of favourites. I've sung a duet with Casey Chambers before, but I think it would be really cool to co-write a song with her, but also a few of um, my American favourite country music singer-songwriters would have to be Luke Combs and Chris Stapleton. I think they're amazing songwriters and great performers as well. I'd love to collab with them. So if you're listening, <laughs> feel free to hit me up. Yes, awesome. So that's my very next question. So if you could go anywhere on tour, any place, any country in the world, like where would you want to go to for your music and why? Um, I think Nashville is the place to be for country music. That would definitely tick off a, a bucket list item for me to perform at any one number of bars or even the Opry over there. Um, but my dad's a veteran, so I have a very strong connection with the veteran community and the Defence Force community. So I've always said I'd love to do a USO tour, whether it's through America or Australia or anywhere in the world. I'd love to go and sing to the troops. So on to my very next question. So what advice would you give to upcoming artists that want to get into singing? And yeah, what advice would you give them? Yeah, definitely. I think just be yourself, honestly. I don't think personally I fit into a specific genre within the country music, but I'm finding my own fans, I'm getting my own growth, and that's really working for me as a performer and a songwriter. So you just got to go out there and give it your best shot. Don't undercut or overcut any other artists as well, and always ask for advice. And or I'm always willing to give out advice. So if anyone wants to contact me, if they're an emerging artist, then you just got to go out and do it and have fun with it as well. If you're not having fun, it's not worth being there. So on to my very next question. So if now Sally could talk to younger Sally, looking back over your time in the career in the music industry, like what advice would you give to your younger self and why? If you told me five years ago that I would be going backstage at Adam Brand's concert and meeting some of my idols in the Australian country music industry, I probably would have told you you're dreaming. But if I could give my younger self advice, it would just be to keep going and to think positive. I think I really get negative sometimes on myself and to others. So I tell myself to just keep smiling, keep thinking of the good times and that you're working towards something that's going to help others as well. So on to the positive and negative side that, that you mentioned. So like what are like the positive and negative side into the music industry and how do you get through those like negative moments as an artist? Yeah, it can be really hard. I mean, I have been told 
some things um, within my music, like, oh, you're not good enough this way or wear a dress or do all these sorts of stuff. But I think you just got to be really true to yourself. And I think the best advice my dad has told me is that everything is a business decision, even if someone is being not the nicest to you and saying things to you or behind your back, you just got to think of it as a business decision and you got to keep going. And that if you're not, if people aren't jealous of you, then you're doing something wrong, which sounds really bad and it's really unfortunate, but as humans, we can get very jealous of other people. So we just got to keep going and not let the negative affect you. But with the positive, I have met so many amazing people, not just the famous country music stars or famous people and athletes. I've met some incredible people just in the general public and I've heard some amazing stories and they have been so inspiring to my songwriting and to my life as well. And they've made me who I am today as a person. So I have to ask, by the way, like, what, how was your Tamworth Music Festival for 2023? And like, why do you recommend Tamworth Music Festival for people that haven't been yet? Oh, it was absolutely amazing. I loved it. I think every year I go to Tamworth, I improve my songwriting. I pref pre I, forgot what was that? I forgot the word. What do you call it? Improve. That's the word I was thinking of. I'm, I pretty much improve everything about myself and I absolutely love it. I mean, the last time I went to Tamworth, it was 2020 for the festival. So I had a three year block where I really had to knuckle down and get going. And I know there's a lot of artists in Tamworth. I mean, it's the place to be in January for country music, but I think if you are an emerging artist, you still got to go and you still got to find as many opportunities as you can and try and get your name out there, network with other artists, network with other songwriters, create your own fans as well, because there's a lot of country music fans out there and you could be discovered by someone. So I'm going to my very last question. So like, what's next for you for the rest of 2023 and onwards? Like, what do you have planned? Yeah, this year is going to be very exciting. So I'm recording my next EP back home in WA with Mark Donahoe. So I'm very excited to uh, hear you guys get some new music and get some new songs from me as well with a band, not just me playing the guitar. And then also I co-wrote a song with Luke O'Shea last year. So I've just been chatting to him today and during Tamworth as well. We're going to record that song together and hopefully get it out for you guys this year. And I'm definitely planning uh, some more tours, not just in WA, but over East as well. So, well, thank you so much, Sally, for appearing on my show. It has been such an incredible pleasure having you on for the show for tonight. Like, do you have like any last final thoughts or anything that you'd like to share to people on the show? Yeah, if you guys want to follow my music journey, make sure you find me on social media at Sally Jane Music. Feel free to give me a like or a follow and send me a message that you saw me on this interview as well. And I have been nominated for the West Australian Country Music album slash EP of the year. So if you do want to vote for me for the WA Country Music People's Choice Awards, make sure you click the first link in my Facebook, the first post that's up there and scroll down and see my head. And I would absolutely love your vote.